This is a little gadget that I built to dump uh, ROMs, 24 pin ROMs. This is actually a ZX81 ROM that came out of my ZX81 from the 80s. It's a 2364. Now that's a bit of a strange pin out and that's the reason why I built this because the ROM reader that I've got doesn't actually support this device. There's other 24 pin devices, 2716s, 2732s, 2516s, 2532s, and they're all sort of slightly different. So I've built this, and all it does is it powers it up. When you plug the USB in, it um, it then cycles through all the address lines and the control lines, which are chip select lines, and just dumps what it sees on the data bus. Now this is a Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico, and that's running a program which does this when you turn it on and um, you can see here even though this is a 5 volt device I've got no level shifters on here there's nothing on the back um, I'm just using resistors now this is partly just to cut down on the number of components and also to sort of experiment with the 5 volt tolerance of the Pico I saw somewhere online I'm pretty sure it was Evan Upton put a post somewhere and I can't find it now saying that the Raspberry Pi Pico GPIOs are probably 5 volt tolerant the only reason they're not quoted as 5 volt tolerant in the data sheet is that they're not, or they can't test them to 5.5 volt tolerance. But anyway, so as well as, well, instead of directly connecting the um, outputs of this ROM chip to the Pico, I've put resistors, series resistors in there, so I've chickened out a bit. And there's 28k resistors, which is fine, and that'll limit the current, so we should be okay. The address lines, the control lines, they're driven from the Pico, so they're 3.3 volts, so you don't really have any trouble with that. It's just the data bus coming back is obviously driven by this chip, which is 5 volts, and it's wired to the USB 5 volt supply. So the idea is, if I unplug it and plug it in, that's basically all you need to do. You need to have a ROM in there, obviously, that you want to dump, and um, when the green light comes on, so it's doing some start-up at the moment, but when the green light comes on, it's actually now dumping the ROM. It does that fairly slowly. There's no need to be quick, and i uh, just let everything settle and so on. And then once it's finished, the uh, code flashes the light. So that's how you know that it's done the job. So we'll wait for that. It takes quite a while. There you go. So now that has dumped the ROM. Now you can set this up to either dump the data out of the USB and capture it on a terminal emulator program or you can set it up to take that ROM dump and write it to the flash chip which is actually here on the board and that's the flash chip that the Pico code is stored in and that will then store it in that non-volatile storage um, until you get in there and delete it somehow and um, that has to be done using the program that is used to operate this. There's a startup uh, mode at the beginning, so you can get into a setup uh, mode at startup. So the idea is that you could, I mean, I didn't use it to remotely dump ROMs because I had the ROMs here, but it could be that you've got ROMs somewhere halfway around the world and uh, you'd like them dumped. So all you need to do is send this board to them to whoever's got the ROMs. They put the ROM in, they turn it on, and um, it's dumped. They can put another ROM in. There's multiple slots for ROMs in the flash. So you can dump multiple ROMs in one sort of session. They can put another one in, turn it on, dump it, wait for the light to flash. And then when they're done, all the ROMs are, are dumped and the images are stored in the flash, they can just send the gadget back to you. You could, I mean, obviously they can, if they're fairly happy, dealing with a terminal emulator they can just dump it over USB. So I've got the code running over here and um, if I, let's exit out of the terminal emulator and go back in and power it down. So if I start the emulator up, here we go, here's the start up. So if you press a key, within five seconds you get a menu which has got the um, configuration 
and um, slot dumping menu options there. So obviously there's simple options like display the menu as a question mark. Q will quit and come out of this. Um, what's the best way to start this? So there are some slots. So if I press uppercase M, this is a list of all the slots in the flash of the Pico. And you can see that five of them are used and we've got 50 slots. So you can do 50 up to 50 ROM dumps. Once a slot is used, it is never used again. So the only way, once you've done 50 uh, dumps to the flash, to get another dump in the flash is to come into this, this uh, menu system and actually clear the slots. Now, the way you do that is to use the clear slot data command there, which is C, and then you have to go through quite a lot of hoops because I didn't want it to be accidentally erased. And then you've got a delay of 10 seconds, so you can still change your mind by pulling the cable out. But once you get to the end of that 10 seconds, it will clear all the slots in the flash. It takes a little while with 50 slots. There you go, done. So if I now look at the slots, they're all blank. <coughs> so there's a bit of configuration data here which tells the code how to operate and at the moment you can see that it's valid because there's a couple of magic numbers that have to be there. Obviously if it's all F's on a blank flash it's not actually valid. Uh, there's a mode. So this is whether you're going to actually dump the ROM image each time you do a dump into a slot in flash. The alternative to that is U which is a USB dump. So that won't actually dump into the slot it will just dump to the screen. So I'll go back to let's go back to slot dump, and that's just done using the U and the S commands here in the menu. And it also counts the number of times that it's done a USB dump and the number of times that it's done a slot dump. Now every time you do a slot dump, because it's no extra trouble really, uh, the data is dumped out of the USB as well, and that's why you always have more USB dumps than slot dumps, or the same number depending on which mode you're in and whether you've changed the mode and done a dump. And you can zero those counters like that. So we're back to zero now. So we've got blank in all the slots. Go back up. And we've got zero counts. Now if I pull the thing out of the USB and turn it back on again, we'll see some start up. If we let it run this time, it'll actually do a dump and it'll dump it to a slot. So that's it, setting the GPIOs up, slot dump, and now it's dumping the data from that ZX81 ROM. So it takes quite a while. At the moment each slot is 16K because that's the largest ROM that I can see you can get from a 24-pin socket. So every slot is a full 16K dump. So that includes using the chip enables as address lines effectively. So if you've got, say, a, a 1K ROM and four chip select lines then you'd end up with the 1k somewhere in this 16k map so it's up to you to then extract that data later on but that's that's another problem so if we now have a look well okay so that's done the light is flashing and it does nothing else at this point it doesn't do anything else to start it up and see what data you've got you have to turn it off back on again and then hit a key in that five second startup time so now if we have a look in the slots, they're all blank, except for the first one. We can see that we've had one USB dump, because the data came out over the USB, and one slot dump. And you can actually have a look at slot number zero. I haven't got echo on at the moment, I can turn that on, but the, um, the Pico code doesn't echo back. But this is slot zero, and that is the data that was dumped. So the 16K of data there comes out in a slightly different format than that. Let's turn Echo on. There you go, Echo's on. So I'll do an R and then slot number 0. So, let's do it again. Pull it out. Plug it back in. So this could be a different ROM. At the moment it's, it's the ZX81 ROM again, but it could be a second ROM. 
and then off it goes, sets the GPIO slot dump. That's the data. So if you had a terminal emulator like I do here, I could capture that and you could get the ROM dump from that. That could then be emailed back to you instead of um, having to post the whole device back. Down to the 16K. There we go. Lights flashing. Unplug it. Plug it back in. Into the menu. Have a look at the slots. And we've got two slots used, just as expected. The statistics. Two USB dumps, two slot dumps. So that's it. I mean, it should be quite useful for dumping remotely through the postal service. That's if the uh, postal service can actually get it there, which at the moment seems to be touch and go. Um, and then people can either send the data back by email or just post this unit back again. I've also found that changing the code level on this device, so if you write some new code to the flash, it doesn't erase the area of flash that I'm using. So there's two megabytes of flash on here and the code is in the bottom one megabyte and the um, slots and configuration data is in the top one megabyte and it turns out you can rewrite the code and that slot data stays there, it doesn't get erased, it only erases the number of sectors that it needs to write the code which is useful because it means you could have a version of this code where you disable the configuration menus and it just goes straight into dumping dumps it to the slot, flashes the light and there's no way then of having any trouble with the code having some sort of missed hit key or something at the beginning and going into the configuration menu. It would just dump, store it in the slot and that's it. And then uh, that's an even simpler bit of code um, to cut down on any sort of issues you might have at the remote location. And then when you come back you can reprogram it with the full level of code and then uh, extract the data. So uh, I've already used it to dump my ROM, so I'm, I'm happy. I've used it, but um, it'll be interesting to see if we can get some remote dumps using this as well.